Here we have a symbol program that is going to use linear op mode. It's taking the servo controller. That's the only two imports you need. And all it's going to do is it's going to take one servo on one controller and move it proportionally to a joystick. And what's nice about this is that if you let go of your joystick, the servo is going to go back to the middle. So here we have to define a servo. I'm calling my server left. And the reason I did this is because the same robot has a servo called left, one center, one right. So you can call your servo something that's already on your robot, something you can use somewhere else, or you could just call it servo, but keep it simple. And then I'm going to have a target. And that target value is going to be updated by the joystick value. Down here, I need to tell it where to get left. So left is going to be in the server hardware map. I'm just going to call it left. I could have this be server left and this just be left, but your name here should definitely be shorter or the same size as your name over here. And then to start with, I want my servo to be right in the middle. Now, remember that your servo controller actually feeds a position between 0 and 255. But Android Studio is scaling that between 0 and 1. So you can feed your servo 0, you can feed it 1, and anything in between. You can use a whole bunch of decimal points. So start, I'm feeding it at 0 0.5, because no matter where that is, it's probably not going to hit anything. Um, then I'm going to wait for start. So we're going to get just this far. I'm going to show you the, the servo uh, as far as what it's going to do so far. So here, I have my op mode lined up. And the servo is just in a random position. I'll say int. And then the initialization brought it to set position 0 0.5. Now I'm waiting for start. So the servo is actually under power. You can see that if I push on it, it'll hum. And the more I push on it, the more it'll hum. Now when that happens, what's happening is actually there's more current going through this wire to the servo. Remember, your servo controller is limited to 1.5 amps per channel and 5 amps total. So if you have a whole bunch of servos and they're all humming, they're going to take more amperage and they're actually going to shut down your controller. Um, so know that the servos are not designed to lift heavy loads and they're not designed to run into hard stops. So make sure that wherever you put your servo, it's not humming. Um, at all is, is best, but um, it shouldn't be humming loudly for sure. And notice that I said to the middle, but it's just going off in a random spot. And that's because when I put on this horn, I just popped it on there, and that's where it was. Uh, so before we start the program, is a good time to reposition that horn. So you can think about, well, with this servo, I want the middle of it to be here, and it'll move 90 degrees in one direction and 90 degrees in another direction. So before I hit play, when I know it's going to be in the middle, and actually this program is going to display to the driver station um, what their the current position is, before I hit play, I'm going to take off that servo horn, and I'm going to say that the middle of the range, I want to be facing this way. So I can do that, I can pop back on, and then remember to put the screw in there so that it doesn't fall out. Um, and then that's going to be the new middle of the position. Then, on the program, after we wait for start, while that mode is active, it's going to do four things. It's going to set the target. And the target is a little funny because the gamepad brings in a value between negative 1 and positive 1. So down here on the joystick, if I go all the way to the left, it's going to be negative 1. All the way to the right, it's going to be positive 1. I need to scale that because that's two times the size of the value I can feed this. This I can feed 0 to 1. This is negative 1, positive 1. But you want to use a whole range here. So I'm going to divide it by 2 so then those are the same size. Then I'm going to add 0 0.5 so that after the equation comes out, wherever I put this is going to be between 0 and 1. Then I'm going to set the position for it. So I'm going to take that target I just created and I'm going to set position for the left servo. So this is the main function for the servos. This is the one you're going to use most often, it's just set position. So you're going to set the position to that. And when you set position to, for a servo, it isn't necessarily going to get there. You're going to set a position to wherever you want it to get to, and it's going to try as hard as to get there, but you don't know if I actually got there with motors, you have encoders, it tells you this is where it is, it's, it has this much power, um, you know, it got to its target, that type of thing. With a servo, you're going to tell it, try to get to here, and if it runs into something, you're going to have no idea. So that's another reason why you want your servos to be under very little stress and no 
uh, interference. So you can make sure that they always get to where you tell them to go to. And that's where if I were to put something in the way, it'll, it'll get stuck. Or if you're trying to lift a heavy load. Then I'm going to feed back two things. I'm going to feed back to my telemetry data the Android Studio target. And that is just simply what I put in here. And for theory, I'm feeding back also the controller position. So the controller position, like we mentioned, is feeding value between 0 and 255. That's a typical servo value. Um, so to get that, I'm going to multiply the target by 255. And then I'm going to say I don't want any decimal points. So it's just chopping off all the decimal points and making it a, an integer value. And the, the reason I'm doing this is so that you understand what the core device discovery is doing. So if you open up core device discovery and you move your position in the servo, that's the value that your core device discovery is using. And uh, when, when we get going here, after I hit play, then I can move this joystick. So as I move this, it's going to move the, the uh, servo back and forth. And now you can see my telemetry data up there. As I move to the left, the joystick to the left, the position gets less, and it moves clockwise. As I move the joystick to the right, the position gets higher, and it moves counterclockwise. So notice if I put my thumb in front of here, and I go back, the servo is actually really strong, so I can't do it with just my thumb. But there, it's not getting to the position because I'm holding it back. And there'd be no way to know that. But it's stressing your servo, and your servo can break permanently if it's left in that condition too long. So there's a simple program where you can find the ranges of your servo. And if you have your servo that's in a constrained spot, so you have things that are on either side of it, you only want to move a little bit, then move it slowly over until it hits whatever it is you're going to find. And then write down the Android Studio target and know that you shouldn't go beyond that. You can do the other side as well. So when it starts humming, back off a little bit, make note of that number, and then you can cap it in your program.